And this is looking at Savory. You know, Dr. Mack is really, really, really big on um, Tavern. And when all that information came out about how bad Taver was on stroke rate, he's like, well, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Surgical aortic valves are not benign, okay? You don't not have anything. So he brought this, uh, this, this data up and 61% of their studied patients using the diffusion weighted MRI that Dr. Lumsden was talking about, 61% had a uh, radiographic infarcts. So they mm-hmm. had those new lesions. Um, any clinical stroke was 17% and moderate to severe clinical stroke, you know, the ones that, that, that everybody considers a stroke, the mm-hmm. obvious ones, was uh, 4%. That's still pretty doggone high. You know, yeah. you think about, especially there's so few aortic valves done anymore. So many of them are going to Taver. But he looked at these two devices, basically, cerebral embolic protection devices, the old Embolex catheter, which is on the right, and as you're looking at the screen, on the right side of the screen as you're looking at it, and the CardioGuard embolic protection cannula. I've got some slides on that actual device on the left. And, you know, basically the Embolex worked by, well, let me see what the next slide, let, let, here they are right here. So the Embolex worked by, let's see, is this going to work? Or do I have to turn it on? Hold on. It's not turned on. I'll see if it's going to work now. There it goes. And there it goes. Okay. I think it's working. Uh, mm. eh, not very well. Okay. I'll just articulate it. So if you look at the uh, the left side of the screen, oh, what happened? Yeah, you can use no, I don't need it. I'm good. I just want to go back to where I was at. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm like all over the map here. There. There you go back to that. Slide four. Cool. Great. Okay. So the embolex catheter, you would take that net and you would insert it into the aortic cannula um, when you were going to apply the cross clamp or take the cross clamp mm-hmm. off. And uh, then it would capture, and it was it was proximal to the heart from the actual flow portion of the cannula. But it was intended for if you did an aortic valve and you had uh, Mm -hmm. uh, calcification or whatever, or debris in the ventricle or around the annulus, it would capture that. And also the athroma that occurs from applying or, or, or removing the cross clamp. On the right side, the cardio guard is a cannula that also proximal to the heart is actually a, uh, a suction, and that goes with a roller pump and sucks about one liter a minute back up through there, and there's a net to mm-hmm. capture so you can verify what you got and also not put it back into your venous circulation, um, any debris that comes up. And I've got some some interesting images with all of these things. But so the concepts are similar, but uh, those are the two devices. And this so is- So when did these come out? Well, the Embolex is- uh, off the market now, but it's been around for, I mean, at least 10 years, okay. at least, um, probably longer. And the cardio guard, I'm not exactly sure when it came out, but this is the first generation. There's a second iteration that's coming out. I'm not sure what the differences are, though. It's not been released and they kind of So it's keep just that. on trial right now? No, or? the cardio guard has been used before. It's the second generation that is on tr- either on trial or they're getting ready to release it. Okay. I'm not 100% positive about their FDA approval, uh, but I'm pretty sure, that I'm, I mean, I'm confident the cardio guard is um, available uh, uh, for purchase through Medtronic, I believe. We could double check that, but I'm pretty sure. So these are the nets and some of the debris that has been uh, removed from the embolex catheter. And as I had mentioned, you know, Dr. Lumsden that, okay, every one of these things has captured something, Mm -hmm. but the patients still have the same outcomes. And so it makes you kind of wonder, and I'll show you that with Dr. Max data that he I mean, it has to be minus that. Minus that, yes. But (laughs) why does this keep going? Doing, I don't know what the heck the problem is. I'm hitting the wrong button is the problem. Okay, so it, yeah, exactly, minus that. that. And those are some I mean, serious things. I mean, I agree. That's going to cause some big problems. I, I can't dispute that. But if four of the five went through, the, the, the question isn't that, isn't it? I mean, for me, I understand your point. It's better to not have not had that. Right. But if that's only 
20% of what actually went through. Then we have What's to do better. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. I, 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 that's that, yes. I mean, it seems intuitive that without that is better, but again, if it's 20%, 30%, even 50% of what actually went through, I don't know. I mean, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to it. So, but in summary, and I think these are the points that I found interesting. In patients undergoing SAV or surgical AVR, the use of these two different protection devices was not, this is very important, was not associated with an improvement in freedom from clinical radiographic uh, infarctions, clinical stroke, overall volume of CNS infarcts by MRI, or neurocognitive outcomes at 90 days. And that really says a lot that what's the point of those devices? Now, again, there's a second iteration, but mm -hmm. there's no difference. Okay, well, let me ask you this. In that 61% you showed me where there was some type two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you only need to show up how many things in your brain before you go into that category. Mm -hmm. Not very many, right? Like one. One, yes, one. any, any, any so, new lesion. For you to say that these aren't effective because there was one, at least. Yeah, but it you says I mean? neurocognitive outcomes at 90 days. And this may be comparing um, the two different devices, not, mm -hmm. not a device or no device. So comparing the two different devices. I was just so saying, may you can't really say that this. it's not effective if one shows and then that. Well, I would agree with you. I yeah. think that makes sense. I think you're right. Okay. But it was associated it yeah, with capture of embolic debris in most patients, a reduction in delirium. So I don't know how that could be you, you, it, based on the first part. And an observed difference in infarct size distribution with fewer larger volume infarcts. And, but there was an increase in adverse events with the embolex catheters compared to that of the cardioguard. So I think that he's mm. saying that mm -hmm. the cardioguard is a better, a better choice. Here's that NeuroArc study that uh, uh, our group, one of the studies they did that Dr. Lumsden talked about. And I think this is a, uh, let me see if this is the slide I was looking for, because there's one particular slide. Okay, that just shows you, you know, percentages, severe stroke, mild to moderate stroke in the various different studies, kind of like a, uh, a meta-analysis. But this is the one I thought was interesting. So look on the right. And you'll see, um, no, that's not it. Go one more. That's it right there. So any debris in uh, the Sentinel ta uh, trial that they did, any debris when you do TAVR was, uh, was uh, in ABR studies was 100%. But look at the material that it is. I have to take my glasses off. 90% of it was arterial wall. I mean, huh. that's in 90% in of the cases. Valve tissue was 50%. 50% of the cases had valve tissue. Over 50% or about the same was calcification. Foreign material, I'm assuming like pieces of suture, mm -hmm. was about 40%. Myocardium was around 30%. Necrotic core and uh, organized thrombus was relatively low. Acute thrombus was very high. And hmm. um, acute thrombus plus tissue and foreign material, all three combined was almost 90%. That's, that's, that's amazing. Hmm. Amazing that 90% 90, 90 of, the, of, the, of the cases had all of that stuff in it. Foreign material, acute thrombus, and plus tissue. It's amazing. That's a hmm. lot. Let's see, what happened? Oh, I always hit the wrong button. Okay, so let's go to that cardio guard uh, thing. So let me show you this cannula. Yeah, there it is, okay. So this is this, this is this cardio guard. Now, again, I think this is the first iteration. So that kind of shows what their mission is. And the concept, unlike the net, the embolex net, is that you're sucking, so you, as you put the clamp on, take the clamp off, or remove the clamp and reinitiate uh, uh, cardiac function after a, an aortic valve or aortic procedure, mm -hmm. one liter a minute going through there is going to suck preferentially that debris. I, you mm, know, I don't know. I don't buy it. I don't buy that. I don't either, but they don't, but you know. But maybe. Well, you would have It's going to capture some, so by your earlier uh, argument... Isn't that better than none? 
Okay, you're coming down on flow. You're probably going to be at what? Two liters. Yep. Then you're going to put your suction on at a liter. Yep. I just feel like there's so many things that can go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. on well, top we need of to find out. Because this may be a really good cannula. And if it reduces, it might. I need and if it a, reduces I need to call emboli in at all, that. by your argument, it's better than not at all, right? But looking at that, I feel like there's a better way. Okay. Okay. But okay. You're, you're, I have no you're, experience so, with it. So here it is uh, right here. The majority, and it's also good for gases, which the embolex really isn't. The majority of which is a very good point. So if you do have GME or you do get a, 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 an air embolus, you mm -hmm. do, this is more beneficial. Now, because I don't it know how it's going to take it because basically the suck tip it is distal. Up. So the tip is that, distal. That won't work. So I don't think it would I don't work think that would either work. too terribly well. But that's, in, that's in the theory, concept. Well, if it was turned the other way, it sounds great. But, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if it was sucking further up, further, right. further out. Right. Right. Okay. So here's the system set up. So you see the oxygen, the, the return flow going into the arterial cannula, on, which would be the cannula on the top right, mm -hmm. on the right side of it, and then the vent and a filter at 40 microns to see what you captured coming in on the left side. Mm -hmm. And then I guess this is a clinical study, kind of gives the outline of it. That's the scientific advisory board. Dr. Mack is on the advisory board. And this is some of the stuff that they took they actually out. Took out. And this is this is surgical now. Remember, this is in Taver. This is sur this is Saver. Hmm. And it may not even just be aortic valve. It could be this could be coronary for all I know. Just taking and putting the clamp on and taking the clamp off. I really don't know. They sent me these slides, but they're keeping a lot of this stuff top secret. And that's, of course, just an image. We saw that from Dr. Lumsden. You can see the, the, the bright white spots as the new lesions um, for, uh, for that kind of thing. And then that talks about percentages and all that. I really don't I mean, feel like we need to go over all these things. Uh, but it decreases hospitalizations, obviously, uh, when you, you know, compared to the control. And so in the conclusions, I think that's, we'll just go ahead and get to that. The use of the system is safe and easy. Emboli were captured in each treated patient. Size of the largest emboli, uh, mean was 1.7 with the largest 3.6 millimeters. Significantly less brain lesions in those mm -hmm. patients that used that device. And uh, diffusion weight, uh, weighted MRI, 54% reduction in uh, average total uh, volume or new lesions. Mm -hmm. And or maybe even maybe 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 also lesion size uh, or distribution, you know, the, the distribution effect. Mm -hmm. um, and then a 39% reduction in patients with lesions at all. So that's, so of the number of patients that did have lesions, new lesions with open MRI, they were able to reduce it, reduce it by 39%. So that's, I mean, those are all pretty yeah. significant. It may I mean, not be maybe statistically, I'm, but I'm just biased and just have a feeling or something that I don't like it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a great cannula and I just don't know. I don't know either. Well, what do you it. think about if you just had the and you filter? Turn the phone lines on. Let's go ahead and cut the slides. Yeah, we got okay. the slides cut. Just so, go ahead and open the phone lines up, and, and Steph and I'll just. What would chat be about different this. then? Throwing it out there, just taking your aortic root vent and putting a filter in it. Because I think the lumen size. I think that that is if you're getting a liter. Because a you couldn't get a that, liter, you don't think. That's a, no. Not without maybe I think half. It's a, I think maybe it's half a, a liter. Yeah, I think a root vent is uh, what is that? That's uh, you could have a bigger. Root it's vent. um, what is a root vent? It's twelve. Twelve maybe. French. Twelve French. Twelve French. Yeah. But you could. So I mean, I you could increase the size, the size of a root vent. Well, then you're putting another yet another hole in the aorta that's much bigger. Um, okay. You know, this is a, a a dual purpose dual lumen okay. cannula, so it's a Throwing single it out hole. There. Yeah, that's a good thought. But I mean, I mean, that may work. I don't know. I don't know. And it may be better to have, you know, a, a vent. Of course, people don't mind sticking holes in the aorta. Most surgeons don't, don't. I mean, I don't think they like making extra holes, but they will. And maybe we should have something. Um, I mean, it can, wouldn't be an extra hole because they already use it. A root vent. It would just be a bigger hole. Right? Yeah, but I think position matters. Mm -hmm. I think position matters, right? So your root vent is going to be proximal right. to your aortic cross clamp. So when you 
you know, to give the cardioplegia. Yes, that's true. So you would have to add the other, the yeah. other vent just for the cross, and then you have one more vent to 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 play with, and you and and of course you have it with this that's anyway. True. You still yeah. have it, but I guess you turn it on and kind of forget it, sort of. So I guess, or they say turn it on. When they're you wouldn't want it, right. you wouldn't want it on all the time. I mean, right. that would be a but why high not? percentage of Maybe your Maybe you flow. should want it on all the time. Well, yeah. you turn the flow up. And what is that doing with laminar flow? I don't know. I don't That's know. a good question. You know who we need? We need we Erica. Need? Erica, we you do. need to come Erica, talk to I'm us. Erica, I'm being hard on your device. Because we can't this thing You out. need to yeah, call and me. Bob, Bob Peacock, too. Yes. Bob, I'm being hard on you. You said you were going to be watching tonight. So, Bob, I'm calling on you. I'm, I'm telling you, because we don't know what the heck we're talking about. I'm we're just, just out here guessing. I'm thinking about the the uh, the Philly cheesesteak sandwiches that Stephanie <laughs> brought for us for dinner tonight. <laughs> and anybody on the web that wants to come, you're welcome to come. But uh, and just find it. Just find the studio if you can hurry up. But uh, I think we need to get Bob Peacock over so. here to talk about this cannula. Because I, I it's existed. I've never heard of it. I haven't heard of it. I I don't think I know anyone that uses it. Do you? All of our no, because no. all of our guys used Embolex, and now and how did they like that? They loved it. They thought it was the because it always why captured something. Why did stop? Because Edwards took it off the market. Mm. I don't know why. What I'm I'm thinking there's mainly rumor. is that there's there's a lot of room for improvement on both. Mm -hmm. I think there is too. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody want to call in? We do have the phones open. I'm going to check the chat line one more time and see what's going on here. I don't see anything. Oh, wait, wait. I, I, I disconnected myself when I closed my computer. Give me one second. And something will come up here. Okay. Say something. Just don't take the camera off of me. Put it on her. No. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> I don't know. This is your this is say, your talk. Say something. Joe went into work for me like uh, a couple hours this morning, and now I'm indebted to him Four to sit here. Four and a half. Is that a good trade off? How I'm gonna sit here for two for your four and a half. <laughs> so I guess I I won. <laughs> okay. I, so, that's a so poor argument good. on my point. Okay. I don't see any, uh, I don't see any questions uh, no. at all. So with that said, I think we ought to, I mean, see, we, we, we got a lot of material. I think we need, I think we need to have a Medtronic in here and I want to see, I want to see how that works. I agree with you hundred percent. Okay. okay. With that said, uh, we're going to,